is my privilege this morning to introduce to you our guest speaker, Dr. Valentino Lassiter, who has served for the last 30 years as the pastor of Eastview United Church of Christ, whose fabulous choir we have just heard, and thank you very much. Dr. Lassiter did undergraduate studies at Fisk University. He has a master from Boston University and a doctor of ministry from Eden Theological Seminary. He has also taught at the University of Massachusetts, Cleveland State University, and he's currently pastor in residence and lecturer in theology and religious studies at John Carroll University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me Dr. Valentino Lassiter. Good morning. It is a privilege and a joy to be here, and it's very fitting and very proper time that is set aside to honor, to reminisce, and to be reminded of the dream and to be reminded of the work that yet lies ahead. Appreciation to all of you for inviting us and for all the things that have gone into this, for our choir, and for all of you for getting up so early. Uh, this morning, amen. amen. Making your way downtown, amen. amen. It's a blessing, amen. Amen. It really lets us know that you're on the side for justice and that you really believe in what you're doing. I also would like to recognize, uh, in addition to my moderator and people from our church and community, my other boss is here, I see, Father John Nehaw, uh, the president of John Carroll University, one of the greatest colleges here in this uh, state. Father Nehaw, We're told that there's a short time. Now, if this was Sunday morning, amen, right? If this was Sunday morning, right about now, we would have you finding your scripture and turning to your Bibles, and we would have you looking uh, for Micah chapter 6. All right, if you pull out your old blackberries, uh, pull out your electronic Bibles, they're on Micah chapter 6 very quickly. Uh, there, Micah calls attention to what we really need to focus on today as we think about the dream and as we think about a continuance of justice. Micah calls our attention here, and Micah kind of like uh, reminisces his own spirit, and he echoes a consent from God at verse 6. Well, what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? What will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? What shall I give, even my firstborn? Thou hast shown me, O man, what is right and what is good. But what does the Lord require thee but to do good, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? That indeed is the mandate we find coming back to us today over and over, and the mandate that calls us back to recall, to rethink, to be recharged in regard to justice. We had time, like I said, if we had time on Sunday morning, out uh, there we would do what the scholars call exegete this text. Right. And this exegetical, exegetical text would take us back to seeing that God has some concerns about humankind. And that humankind is doing more talking than humankind is doing acting. And working through the prophet here, God is saying, you're talking justice, but you're not living justice. It's time for us to see justice. And here he holds court. And as he would hold court, how can he sit in the prophecy of holding court? Well, he's God. Therefore, God can hold court. We can see the picture here. El Shaddai, a.k.a. Jehovah, a.k.a. Jehovah Rapha. A.K.O. Jehovah Jireh, A.K.A. the one who knows all, A.K.A. the all-powerful, A.K.A. he's sovereign, A.K.A. the one who knows all hearts and minds and therefore knows true justice when he sees it and gives mercy at his own love. I said I didn't have time to preach. All right. but anyway, listen to the text as he calls the mountains to bear witness 
And we all know why mountains would be called in. Well, of course, mountains were around during creation. The mountains actually saw justice. Mount Sinai, the law. Oh, yeah, they know about that. Mount Arad. Mount Arad saw God's mercy come back when peace reclaimed once again. And God knows, oh, we can jump all the way through. But what did we say about Mount Calvary? Oh, yes, all of the mountains, well, they know God's justice and mercy. But here we are today, 86 years after the birth of Cain. We imagine that that same justice call still continues to reign in the hearts everywhere. 61 years after Brown versus Board of Education. 52 years after Birmingham, after Washington, after I Have a Dream reverberated in the minds and hearts all over this world. 45 years even since his death. God is still calling our attention we have some leftover justice issues about it. We still talk justice, but we don't walk justice. We still formulate freedom, but we don't act freedom. We still say love, but we don't show love. What is needed? We've got to get back on target. And listen to what he says here. All of you religious types, keep your old jive offering. I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want any form of circumstance. I don't want to see you boiling down. What I'd like to see is for you to try to love everybody and to get along. What I'd like to see is to find people cross the line, swallow some pride, show some concern. What I'd like to see is to see people become real, that justice is still a major concern. King constantly call our attention to a case of justice malpractice over and over and over again. Already okay. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm getting a signal. All right. King constantly called our attention to that. And help us to realize that we too must become witnesses. We too at this day and time must walk. We too at this day and time must become strong that we not just talk about justice, but show justice. We do not just become forms of justice, but we become actions of justice. That we here in this interfaith, I'm going to close, I'm at this last story, and I'm closing it in with that famous lines of preachers. I just say that I'm almost through. <laughs> but just to pull all of this together, I tell you, in there, you've heard the story about the uh, city that never had rain, the city that had a big drought. In that city, everyone wanted to know, what do we do as people? What do we do as Baptists? What do we do as Methodists? What do we do as Catholics coming together to pray, to get God's attention? And so they had this long, long prayer meeting. I'm rushing. They had this long prayer meeting, get to the end of it. And as they had this prayer meeting, everyone came with his or her own different denominational baggage, praying and expecting God to do great things, great pageantry. Everyone marched in with his or her own denominational band. Uh -huh. Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. They kept on praying and nothing happened. Prayed again and nothing happened. Got out incense and prayed. Brought their banners and prayed. Nothing happened. Then all of a sudden this little one innocent young boy came in. Fell down on his knees after the big religious procession had gone. All the denomination people had gone. Came in, fell on his knees at the same place. Looked up to heaven. Lord, we need some rain. Please, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, we need rain. And the story says that within two days, there was a downpour over and over and over. So all the religious folk kept on going back and saying, well, what did we not do that this young man did? We know God. We have all the judicatories together. We have all the things together. We know where we are. We have the diocese. What did we do wrong? Uh -huh. And it turned out, the young man had one thing that all of the religious leaders did not have. All right. He carried an umbrella. <laughs> because he was expecting to do something. He was looking for God to do. He was expecting God to do some things. So I said that to say today, as far as justice is concerned, we think about what has happened in this last year and where we need to go. 
we need some umbrellas. It's not a Baptist umbrella. It's not a Methodist umbrella. It's not a blue state umbrella. It's not a red state umbrella. It's a justice umbrella. We need some love umbrellas to pull out and to be an expectation to know that God is still going to do great and marvelous and wondrous things, but it's still, as King said over and over, it always must begin with us. Amen. Amen.